Hello, hello, grade 11. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at grade 11 mathematics paper 1, November 2022. And we are doing algebra past paper practice. So now this is what I would like you to do before we start with the lesson. Please like and subscribe to the channel so that um, you get more of this content. So without any further ado, let's just get right down to the lesson. Ra so now we have the november 2022 paper question one um in 1.1 it says solve for x in each of the following right so we have 1.1.1 it says x squared plus x minus 12 is equals to zero now this is this is what i want you to note um with these questions here always in your question one you will notice that um you have the solve for x which they come in the form of um, the quadratic equation and then you can also have another uh, solve for x which comes um, in the form of the sides right and then another solve for x which comes in the form of exponents and then also we have another um, solve for x which comes in the form of inequalities right so this is the trend with the questions this is normally how your questions are given in paper one um if you check even any paper from whatever year this is the structure that it follows right so if you know the structure you know um what to practice for your exam and you know what to expect right so now let's start with 1.1.1 um this is the basic one right whereby we need to factorize that so we have x squared minus x um not minus plus so it's x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to zero so we know with factorizing this one we have to just look at the last term here so we have 12 so we say let's write down all the factors of 12 so we have one um two three four six and 12 remember what are factors these are all the numbers that can go into 12 and leave no remainder so now because this is a trinomial we need to um open two brackets like that and then we distribute the x here so x on this bracket and x on the other bracket and don't forget it's an equation so equal to zero right so now um, what do we do in terms of our factors we say what are the two factors that we can multiply to get uh, to get 12 but when we add or subtract them we're gonna have one right so we can see from this ones if you can just check like this if you take the first term and the the first factor and the last factor that's one times 12 it does give you 12 but then saying 12 minus 1 gives you 11 and not 1 now let's check 3 2 and 6 2 times 6 is 12 but if you say 6 minus 2 that gives you 4 and then it doesn't give you that one now let's check the ones that are in the middle we say 3 times 4 3 times 4 gives us 12 and when we say 4 minus 3 we have 1 right the middle term so now this is how we're gonna have it let's have 4 and let's have three remember there is no um there is no um particular structure into how, uh, how you distribute your numbers so you can have four on this bracket and you can have three on that bracket what is important here is your signs right so remember on the last term we have a negative and we know a negative can be formed by uh, having two unlike signs right so if you have a positive and a negative that's where you you you, you can form a, a negative by multiplication so now that means one of these factors must be negative and the other must be positive now for that we need to consult the second term here we can we can see that the second term or rather the middle term is positive right so that means we assign the positive to the bigger number right so always that the sign of the middle term will go to the bigger number that means the other one must have a negative 
right? So that's how you have it. You have x plus 4 and then in bracket x minus 3. So at this point, we know um, we need to just equate um, each and every bracket to 0. But remember, you are in grade 12. There is no mark for that step. So you just come here and say x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 3, right? Now let's check um, 1.1.2. So for 1.1.2, we have it in SAT form. So now for this question, you need to make sure that um, your square root is always isolated. So in this case, we can see that the square root is, is already isolated. So what are we going to do here? So solving that one, we have root. 2x plus 1 is equals to x minus 1, right? Now, in order to solve this, we need to get rid of the square root, right? How do we get rid of the square root? We get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. So remember, we square uh, the left-hand side to get rid of the square root but then remember what you do on the left hand side you also have to do on the right hand side so on the left hand side the square here only gets rid of the square root there so we are left with the contents inside that's 2x plus 1 but then the effect of the square here is not the same because remember this side we do not have the square root so for on this side what do we have we have um, a doubling of this right then we have 2x plus 1 is equals to x multiplied by x that gives us x squared and then we have x multiplied by negative 1 that's negative x and then negative 1 times x that's negative x again then we have negative 1 times negative 1 that's positive 1 right now having to solve this we can take everything that's on the left hand side and um, transpose it to the right hand side so now we have x squared the negative x and the negative x minus x gives us negative 2x but remember if you are transposing this to, uh, this positive 2x it will also become negative 2x then we are left with this one here so we have plus one but then this one when we transpose the positive one when we transpose it to the to the other side it becomes negative one right so now we have zero is equal to x squared minus 4x like that then one minus one that's zero right so that's how we have it but then we are not done yet right if we check here we can see that we still have a common factor of x so what do we do with that common factor so remember we can write that as x squared minus 4x is equal to 0 right so it's just a matter of um, swapping the, the 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 terms around then remember we have the common factor x so if we factor out x we are left with this x here when we factor out x from 4x we are left with this 4 and then that's equal to zero at this point we can see that our uh, our uh, equation is in standard form that means now we can take this x equated to zero or we take the expression inside the bracket equated to zero so at this point you don't want to make the mistake of um or of visiting here because it will only take you back to uh, this step here so when when you have it like that in standard form you just take that x equated to zero and you take that x minus four also equated to zero so now if you continue with this one it gives you x is equal to four but then with these questions you you want to test if all your x values will give you um the the answer there so now you want to test if you put in your x values um the the equation will balance right so remember for an equation your left hand side needs to be equal to the right hand side 
right so at this point you want to um, substitute that uh, zero into this equation here so if you substitute zero here that means you have two multiplied by zero plus one and then um, that gives you root one then we know root one can either come out as a plus or minus one right so your answer is plus one or negative one now if you substitute your zero here on the right hand side we have zero minus one which is negative one so we can say um the equation will be balanced for x is equals to zero now let's test if x is equals to four so we have two multiplied by four plus one right then this will give us two times four that's eight plus one that's nine again nine comes out as plus or minus three right so that's positive three or negative three now if we substitute a uh, four on the right hand side we have four minus three that gives us three so all these x values were correct so for x is equals to zero that's a value and x is equals to four that's a value so both these x values are valid right now let's look at 1.1.3 we are given the two um to the exponent of x root x is equals to 2 um to the exponent of 27 right so we can see that this is in exponential form right so uh, if we have to reflect on our laws of exponent we can already see what is going on here right so let me write it this side so that's 2 to the exponent of x root x is equals to 2 to the exponent of 27 so from this one we can see what is going on here we can see that we have the same basis right so we know that all that says if you have the same basis in an equation you can drop down the exponents right so we have base 2 on the left hand side and base 2 on the right hand side that means now we can drop the exponents that's x times root x is equals to 27 but remember um when dealing with exponents we always want our we always want our uh, our prime base uh, our basis to be primes right or rather our our numbers to be in prime factors right so now let's look at the left hand side um on the left hand side we have a set there then we know because that's in a square root when it comes out there it comes out as x one over two so you will remember that we said if you have a uh, square root of x it comes out at as x1 over 2 because we are saying for square root secretly we have a 2 here right but then it's not written then um, if it's in a cube root you have it coming out as x to the exponent of 1 over 3 and if it's in a fourth root you have it coming as x 1 over 4 x x x to the exponent of 1 over 4 so that's basically that now um let's continue with this one so we want to write 27 in exponential form how do we write 27 in exponential form so in your calculator you would just press 27 say equal and then shift fact that will give you 3 to the exponent of 3 so if you want that you say 27 in your calculator then you press equal sign then you press shift and then you press fact so this right now let's continue with this one so you can see here that we now have same basis we now have same basis so when we have same basis what do we do with the exponents when multiplying and we have same basis we have to add the exponents remember the x here has an exponent of one right so we need to say one plus one over two that will give us x to the exponent of three over two then it's equals to three to the exponent of three 
So writing that we have x to the exponent of 3 over 2 is equal to 3 to the exponent of 3. Now how do we get rid of this 3 over 2? We have to multiply by its reciprocal. The reciprocal is 2 over 3, right? Then remember what you do on the left hand side you also have to do on the right hand side so what happens now this here will cancel right all these numbers will cancel and then we are only left with x but here if you say 3 multiplied by 2 over 3 the 3 and 3 will cancel and then we'll be left with 3 to the exponent of 2 so now what is 3 to the exponent of 2 that gives us 9 right so 9 that's your solution okay so now we have 1.1.4 and then we can see that it's in a form of an inequality so now let's try to solve that one we have um, x squared minus 2x minus 8 and then the inequality sign is less than less than 0 so with this one we can see that it is a trinomial quadratic equation so now we'll distribute the x we have x and x there now we need to look at the factors of 8 so factors of 8 are 1 2 4 and 8 now if you look at this if we say 1 times 8 that does give us um, 8, but then if we say 8 minus 1, um, it doesn't give us the middle term. Remember here we must choose two factors. When we multiply them, they will give us the last term, but when we add or subtract them, or subtract them, they give us the middle term. So now looking at 2 and 4, 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So that means now we have 4 and then we have 2, right? Now what about our signs? With our signs, we have to consult the middle term. We can see the middle term is negative. So that means the sign of the middle term will always go to the bigger number. So because the last term is negative, we know a negative is formed by two signs that are not the same. So one here, one factor must be negative and the other must be positive. So the one that is negative is the bigger one because it takes the sign of the middle term. Then obviously the other one has to be positive, right? Now at this point, in order to solve this, for some time you have to pretend as if you are solving an equation, right? So let's now act as if we are solving an equation this would be x minus 4 x plus 2 is equals to 0 right then having to solve this obviously you would have x is equals to 4 or x is equals to negative 2 right but then with solving an inequality you don't do this you don't take um the the bracket and start to uh, equate it to less than 0 so you just solve it by the side pretend as if we have an equal sign then when you find your values you come here and write critical values and then you start with the minimum with the minimum value which is negative 2 and then end with the maximum value that's 4 so this is what you're gonna have right on your paper that's that's what you're gonna have you have negative 2 and 4 right now at this point you want to test out your values you want to see if the values that agree to this uh, inequality are within your critical values or outside your critical values right so this is what you do a simple strategy to this if you have one uh, if you have one solution that is negative and the other being a positive is to use zero so i call it the zero tester method right so you just use zero so basically what you do is you substitute zero into this um original equation there right so now if you substitute zero we have zero square minus two zero 
minus 8 less than 0 right now obviously having to punch all this in the calculator you'll only be left with that negative 8 now is negative 8 less than 0 is that true yes we know that negative 8 is less than 0 now if if truly we say that negative 8 is less than 0, that means it agrees with the equation. So we need to say um, negative 2 and then here we have 4. So this means the values that are the values the, that are a solution to this are the values that are within negative 2 and 4. We can also write this as x element of negative 2 is two four and include your round brackets now if you have to include a drawing for that if you have to include a drawing for that this is how you sh you indicate the drawing right so you show that the values that agree are within the critical values right are within the critical values but what would happen if we if we substituted that zero and for argument's sake, let's say maybe we get positive 8. So now we'd say, is positive 8 less than 0? Definitely, positive 8 is not less than 0, right? So in this case, you'd have your signs facing the opposite directions. So you'd have x less than or x greater than, right? So x less than the minimum value and x greater than the maximum value that would mean that your values are outside the critical values, right? Then we have um, 1.2, it says given f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 6x minus 7. 1.2.1 says solve for x if f of x is equal to 0 correct to two decimal places remember i always told you that when you see that statement correct to two decimal places that means that equation cannot be factorized right that means you only have to use your quadratic equation so that's your hint to uh, um as to what questions to use quadratic equations on right so you will see it by that correct to two decimal places so now remember to solve this they told you that f of x is equal to zero so this is how we are going to write this one so we have f of x we have f of x is equal to 5x squared and then plus 6x minus 7 but remember they said f of x is equal to 0 right so that means we can write this equation and equate it to 0 6x minus 7 is equal to 0 now at this point what do we want to do let's um remember this is in the form of a quadratic equation which is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c so now we want to see what is our a here our a is 5 then what is our b our b is 6 and our c is negative 7 right now having all that you can now apply your quadratic equation so remember your quadratic equation goes x is equal to negative b plus minus and then we have square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a right now at this point you want to substitute your values here so you have negative and then what is your b check your b is positive 6 so we have 6 plus minus and then again here we have 6 and then square and then what is your a that's 5 what's your c negative 7 right over 2 that's a then what's your a your a remember is 5 
Now you just want to punch this in a calculator. So remember your, your, your calculator doesn't have that plus minus. So you need to um, write this out with a positive sign first and then uh, pre uh, edit on your calculator, put the negative sign. So you're gonna have the values for x, two values for x, so x is equals to and x is equals to right. So if you punch that in your calculator, um, you will have your values like that. So uh, we have 1.2.2, it says hence or otherwise, calculate the value of d for which 5x squared plus 6x minus d is equal to 0 has equal roots. So this equation um, forms the nature of roots, right? So for the nature of roots, um, you need to understand this. We say now for nature of roots, remember the nature of roots is determined by the discriminant, which the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Now we know if our discriminant is equal to 0, then we have real rational and equal roots, right? So we have real rational equal roots. But if our a is greater than 0, we have real but unequal roots. And if it happens that our discriminant is less than 0, that means we have non-real roots, right? So now what are we asked to calculate here? We are asked to calculate the value of d for which 5x squared plus 6x minus d is equal to 0 has equal roots. So that means we need to equate our discriminant to 0. Remember, has equal roots. So for equal roots, we, we equate the discriminant to 0. So now let's solve that one. We have um, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now remember, what's our b? Our b from this equation, we have 5x squared plus 6x minus d, right? So our a again is 5, our b is 6, and our c becomes that negative d, right? So uh, b is 6, and then square that, 4, and then we have our a as 5, and then c is negative d, then equal to 0. So remember, we are looking for d. What is 6 square? That's 36. And then 4 times 5, that's negative 20. But times, multiply, by, multiply that by negative d, that becomes positive. Remember, negative multiplied by negative is a positive. So we have plus 20 d is equal to 0. So remember, we are looking for d. So we need to take that 36, um, transpose it to the other side. So we have negative 36. Now divide by 20, divide by 20, our d is equal to, so that's negative 9 over 5, negative 9 over 5. So okay, we have 1.3, it says solve for x and y simultaneously, right? So um, dealing with our simultaneous equation, let's check. We have two equations like that. And the first thing that we want to do is to write equation one and equation two. So this, is, this becomes our equation one, and this becomes our equation two. So remember, we have to choose the simplest side, right? So which one looks simple? We can all agree that equation number one looks simple because it will not involve us having, um, it will not involve us having uh, fractions, right? So let's choose equation number one as the simplest equation. So what variable can we make the subject of the formula there? 
we can see we can make x the subject of the formula so we want to rewrite our equation number one and then make x the subject of the formula that will become negative 3 plus 2y we can label this equation 3 right now remember what we are supposed to do we need to take that equation 3 and substitute it to the equation we have induced so in this case we will substitute equation 3 into equation number 2 so we say substitute substitute equation 3 into equation 2 right so remember we have um x y there so in the position of x i will have that expression so that's negative 3 plus 2y and then remember i have this y here is equal to 20. now this y can multiply inside here so we have negative 3y plus 2y squared then we can bring over this 20 then minus 20 is equal to 0 let's rearrange this to a quadratic equation so we have 2y squared then minus 3y minus 20 equal to 0 now at this point we want to factorize this right so at this point we want to factorize this let's look at the factors of 20 we have 1 2 4 5 10 and 20 so at this point we're just going to choose the factors that are in the middle right so we have 4 and 5 so breaking that down we have 2y squared and minus 3y plus 20 is equals to 0 so opening two brackets we have 2y and then this side we have y equal to 0 now putting those factors there um, if we put a 4 here and then we put 3 we put 5 here so that's 5 times 4 that's 20 if you say 2 times 4 the i pro smile remember the method the i pro smile if we say 2 times 4 that's 8 but 8 minus 5 um, is 3 right or rather 5 times y is 5 then 2 is 5y then 2y times 4 is um, 8y so here remember we have 5 times y that gives us 5y and then we have 2 times 4 that gives us 8y so the combination of these numbers if we subtract them we can see that we will have that middle term negative 3y right so in this case what are we going to have remember then the 8 needs to be a negative so that means we put the negative this side right so we'll have 2y times negative 4 that will give us a negative 8 so that means this side so here remember we have um, negative that's negative 20 then that's a negative and this side we're going to have a positive right so equating each bracket to 0 we have 2y plus 5 is equal to 0 or y minus 4 is equal to 0 then that means we have 2y is equal to negative 5 or y is equal to 4 so on the right hand side we are done but with this one we need to divide further by 2 then we have our y is equals to so our y is equals to negative 5 over 2 but remember we are not done we need to solve for x and y simultaneous so at this point we only have the values for y so two values of y will also produce two values of x so now remember we go to equation number three so we say for y is equal to negative 5 over 2 what do we have in equation number three remember the equation number three is x is equal to negative 3 plus 2y so let's write it x is equal to negative 3 plus 2y now at this point you want to substitute your y 
um, the value for y in that position for y. Then uh, we have negative 3. Then this one, this one, they cancel. Minus 5. So that gives us negative 8. Right. Then we have for y is equal to for y is equals to 4 for y is equals to 4 we have x again is equals to negative 3 plus 2y that means that x is equals to negative 3 plus 2 times 4 right so that gives us negative 3 plus 8 which is x is equals to 5 right 5 so we have our values we have our values for x and y so writing this as coordinates we have negative 8 is to negative 5 over 2 and then this side we have 5 is to 4 right so and that's how you could have solved your simultaneous equation all the best guys please keep on practicing um